tonight I have no idea because I can't say a single one of you but I can hear you just fine good evening ladies and gentlemen I'm your MC for the evening Dan dance and Dan they play music I will dance anytime anywhere it's great to be back let's just get things things started let's hear it the people behind me they have created art for you to enjoy. Let's enjoy, shall we? We'll start the evening off with the children's masquerade. So we have contestants. Are we ready for the children's masquerade? Apparently not quite yet. Oh, but I hear from this side that they are ready. So. Without further ado, in the first category, it's time to enter that galaxy from far, far away. Please welcome Kira Miller, Melee Whitwer, Kiana, and Nolani Whitwer from the universe of Star Wars. <laughs> Uh, 
Wonderful Star Wars, you love them too. Ah, oh, this is great. That was the entry for Star Wars. Our next act by Katrina Haynes and Zoe Mead, they are the Rocket Girls. That was Katrina Hayes and Zoe Meads as the Rocket Girls. So, on to our next act, Ragnar Hart as Fluttershy. That was Ragnar Hart as Fluttershy. Our next act is Maxwell Batty as Link. That was Maxwell Batty as Link. Our next act, next act is Lane Miller from the Marvel Universe. Please welcome Iron Man. That's Lane Miller as Iron Man. Next up, Ava Miller from the animated series Futurama. Here's Bender. As Ava Miller as Bender the Robot. And our final entry in the Children's Masquerade, Logan Ashcroft Lynch as the hero of the Star Wars saga, R2-D2. Logan Ashcroft as R2-D2. We know he saved everybody. And that was everybody in the Children's Masquerade. Let's give them all a hand. All right. So, now it's time to introduce to you our honored panel of judges. In the uh, worksmanship category, we have two judges. Uh, the first one is Anna Hay. Anna Hay has an extensive background in the apparel industry as a professional fashion designer and a technical designer. With a passion for sewing and anime, 
She merges a dream job and love of all things anime and high fantasy. She has a wide array of experience working with leather, woven and knit fabric, brocade, silk, lace, lace, mesh, feather, as well as beading, embroidery, and painting. Raised in New York City, Anna started sewing around age 14 when she was accepted into high school of fashion industries, majoring in fashion design, and went on to the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City. After college, she worked for labels such as Norma Kamali, Eileen Fisher, and Nordstrom. On the job training, uh, sharpened her eyes for details and workmanship. Working with higher priced labels refined her hands for good quality fabric and their ability to drape. It also taught her best practices on construction methods. As Anna became more acclimated with anime, video games, and high fantasy, she discovered that all of those costumes could be made to fit a real person. That was around 2010 when she started to really investigate theater art and cosplay. With laser focus on quality, workmanship, and wearability, Anna had since created many cosplays professionally and for herself, winning many awards and recognition for her workmanship along the way. For more or information, you can check out Anna's cosplay at Seattle Cosplay. So let's hear it for Anna. Welcome. Our second workmanship judge is Julie Zetterberg. After entering as Princess Leia at the very first NorwestCon, Julie has attended every NorwestCon since and has completed, competed, worked backstage, or judged at nearly every NorwestCon masquerade. She competes in the Master Skill Division and has won awards for presentation, workmanship at world cons and costume cons. She's a member of the Beyond Reality Costumers Guild and also the International Costumers Guild. And now our presentation judges. First up is Melissa Quinn. Originally intending to be an artist, Melissa caught the costuming bug at her first WesterCon. Quickly deciding all other occupations paled in comparison, she returned to school to take her sewing skills to the next level. Currently, she keeps busy as owner of Fairy Fingers Custom Costumes and Event Apparel and mother of a budding masquerade performer. Let's hear it for Melissa. Our second presentation judge, Mr. Greg Sardo. Yeah. Greg has been making, wearing, and presenting costumes and masquerades for almost 30 years since DreamCon 1. For those of you old enough to remember DreamCon 1. He's appeared on stage at conventions from NorwestCon to WesterCon, CostumeCon, and WorldCon, even managing to win a few awards along the way. Costuming has given him the opportunity to be everything from an ancient plague to a redneck alien. Our final presentation judge, and one of our guests of honor, Amy Mainzer. An American astronomer specializing in astrophysical instrumentation and infrared astronomy. She's the deputy project scientist for the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer and the principal investigator for the NEOWISE project to study minor planets and the proposed near-Earth object camera space telescope mission. She's appeared a number of times in the History Channel series, The Universe. She also appears in the documentary featurette, Stellar Cartography on Earth, included on the Star Trek Generations home video release when it came out in March of 2010. So welcome, Amy. Yeah, we have a rocket scientist in the house. And she's one of us. Okay, so here we are. The judges are in place. The contestants are in place. 
Let's get this show started. Our first entry of the evening, entry number one in the Master Skill Division, please welcome Lady Danger. From the Pan Pacific Design Collective's Fall 2025 Jaeger Influenced Line, this is Lady Danger. That was entry number one in the master category, Lady Danger, as portrayed by Tori, Tori Stenmark, costume inspired by the movie Pacific Rim. Let's hear it for Pacific Rim, yay. Entry number two. In the novice skill division, please welcome the 12th Doctor. He's booted, he's suited, he's 100% Rebel Time Lord. Let's give him the love 12 deserves. As entry number two, the 12th Doctor, that was Laura Lasser, costume source TV series Doctor Who, designed by the costume designer of Doctor Who. And entry number three. In the novice skill division, this is the next episode of Future Cops. <laughs> This episode of Future Cops is brought to you by Fishy Joes. Fishy Joes, ride the walrus. Future Cops is filmed live on location with the men, women, and robots of law enforcement. All suspects are considered innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Um, that is to say, all suspects are considered guilty until proven innocent in a court of law. Remember, in the future, crime does not pay because we know you're going to do it before you do. That was entry number three in the Novice Skill Division, Future Cops. Presented by Richard Johnson, the costume source, Futurama, and constructed by Richard Johnson and Shaley Bell. Our next entry, entry number four. In the Master Skill Division, please welcome. Davy Crockett, traveling through outer space. Reborn in the stratosphere and Saturn bound. Flying fast and miles off the ground. Jumped from the spaceship just to look around And shot off his gun without making a sound Davy, Davy Crockett King of this brand new place Davy, Davy Crockett 
skin Traveling through outer space Davy, Davy Crockett King of this brand new place That was entry number four in the master skill division, Davy Crockett in Outer Space. Coming to you soon on Fox. <laughs> it's Joss Whedon's next series. I don't know what he... I'd watch it. Anybody here watch that? <laughs> I think that was pretty good, yeah. Uh, that was Eric Prill, inspired by a song from They Might Be Giants. Costume designed and constructed by Eric Prill. And now entry number five in the Master Skill Division. They're off to see the wizard. Dorothy and Toto have returned to the strange land of Oz, only to realize this is not the Oz they visited last time. And so, they begin their travels on the yellow brick road of Chibi Oz. Follow the yellow brick road, follow the yellow brick road, follow, 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 follow the yellow brick road. Come on, Toto. We need to find our friends. If these are our heroes, what's the Wicked Witch like? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Toto, what do we do now? That was entry number five in the Master Skill Division. They are off to see the wizard. Uh, the contestants were Molly Boone, Alan Kemp, Kathy Kemp, Melissa Nichols, Ann Schilling, and Rick Van Meter. Costume source, Wizard of Oz, Batman, the animated series, Doctor Who, The Lion King, and Hocus Pocus. Costumes designed and constructed by Kathy Kemp, Alan Kemp, Molly Boone, and Melissa Nichols. Our next entry, entry number six, um, we've been, uh, no, sorry, we've actually been having a little bit of trouble with uh, random time vortexes. It happens at these conventions, so uh, we'll just skip over six. It, it, it's okay, she'll pop back yesterday or something. So, uh, entry number seven in the novice skill division. Hello, Stonehenge! Who takes the Pandorica takes the universe. Bad news, everyone. Because guess who? Could you all just stay still a minute? Because I am talking! Now, the question of the hour is, who's got Pandorica? Answer, I do. Next question, who's coming to take it from me? 
I don't have anything to lose. So, if you're sitting up there in your silly little spaceship with all your silly little guns, and you've got any plans on taking the Pandorica tonight, just remember who's standing in your way. And then, and then, do the smart thing. Let somebody else try first. That was entry number seven in the Novice Skill Division, titled Hello Stonehenge. That was Chris Corbett from Doctor Who. Slight change in plan. It happens. It happens on these live broadcasts, but that's okay because I believe in fairies. Dot com. <laughs> like you thought you could escape that one. Okay, uh, turns out we, entry number six has been found. So, entry number six in the Journeyman Skill Division, please welcome Malasandra Avasai. From Game of Thrones, this, fa this dress is made from crepe back satin and necklace and necklace made. Oh, I'm sorry. Dress is made from crepe back satin and necklace made from brass pieces and resin cast gems. Uh, the entrant would like to thank her fellow cosplayers of Westeros for being such amazing teachers. And that was Devona Struthers, costume source, Game of Thrones. You'd think that would be popular this weekend for some odd reason. Don't know why. All right. On to... Diana Daniels. And now entry number nine in the Novice Skill Division. Please welcome the Khaleesi herself, Daenerys Targaryen. When the sins of my father weigh down in my soul In the pain of my mother Will not let me go 
Well, I know they can't go fire from the sky to refine the purest of kings. And even though I know this fire brings me pain, even so, and just the same. Make it rain, make it rain down, Lord. Just make it rain. That was entry number nine in the novice skill division as Daenerys Targaryen. That was Bettina Adrania. Costume source, Game of Thrones. So, we've seen Game of Thrones, we've seen Doctor Who. In the real world, there's a little bit of casting news I'd like to share with you. Macy Williams, Arya Stark from uh, Game of Thrones. It was recently announced she's going to be in the new series of Doctor Who. Looking forward to that episode. Okay, moving on to entry number 10. In the novice skill division, returning from your childhood memories comes a, child, uh, comes a television legend. Good morning. Good morning, Captain. Come on out and play. Wake up, sunshine. Share this rain today. As entry number 10 in the novice skill division, that was one of the great captains of television, Captain Kangaroo. And playing that part was Robert Mitchell. Desi uh, costume designed by Bob Keeshan, constructed by Robert Mitchell and Susan Hutchins. Nostalgia. It's so heartwarming, it's great. Entry, ah, entry number 11. In the journeyman skill division, this is, uh, ooh, okay, I have, ah, okay, next, there we go. Next up, we have, yes, entry number 11 in the journeyman skill division. The heck, the heck was that? Oh, thanks. Okay, uh, it seems some unexpected dignitaries have arrived and I've been asked to introduce them. So, without further ado, it is my honor to, um... Oh, yeah. Yeah, come on. It's okay. It's safe. Now, nah, wait, wait, uh, ah. It's my pleasure to present to you renowned adventurer Lord Celeb Gladestorm the Royal Seer, Lady Allaire Gladestorm, and their young daughter, Lady Lilac, traveling safely in her globe of protection. They came across an unknown portal, and being the proud explorers that they are, bravely stepped through into this new world, and have asked to say hello. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can do it now. So let us all please welcome them to no Yes? Oh, yep. Right here. Uh, let's see. Uh, there we go. So, let, let us please welcome these fine ambassadors to our planet, these three strangers in a very strange land. And as strangers in a strange land, that was Mr. and Mrs. Ryshak. Costumes designed by Mr. and Mrs. Ryshek. Now we're up to number 12. In the Novice Skill Division, please welcome Kaylin Amnell. 
Kaylin grew up at the Confessor's Palace and, like all confessors, was given an exceptional education. She was trained in both diplomacy and combat, as well as her powers and duties of a confessor. She was told as a child she was not allowed to fall in love. That was entry number 12 in the Novice Skill Division, Kaylin Amnell, as portrayed by Heather Skaggs from the television series Legend of the Seeker. Costume designed by Heather Skaggs and constructed by Barbara Skaggs. Our next entry is number 13. In the Master Skill Division, Please welcome Minoan Fantasy. That was entry number 13 in the Master Skill Division, Minoan Fantasy, as portrayed by April Fairs. Uh, the costume source was an historic wall painting and statuary, costume designed and constructed by April Fairs. <laughs> entry number 14 in the Novice Skill Division. Please welcome Cora Ang. Koshi and Roku from The Last Airbender, it's the Avatars. Earth. Fire. Air. Water. Only the Avatar can master all four elements and bring balance to the world. That was entry number 14 in the Novice Skill Division. The avatars from The Last End of Airbender, Korra, Aang, Koshi, and Roku, as portrayed by Alex Brick, Carolyn Gresswell, Scott Helvick, and Sophia Massey. Costume sourced, uh, the internet, avatar.wikia.com. <laughs> they had to look up each one. Okay, coming up. Number 15 in the Master Skill Division. Honey, I'm home. In the quest for power, the price of ambition should always be considered. That was entry number 15 in the Master Skill Division. 
Honey, I'm Home, as portrayed by Elta Quinn from the movie... I'm so sorry, Alita Quinn. It's a very small typeset. Alita Quinn from the movie Sleeping Beauty, costume designed and constructed by Melissa and Alita Quinn. It's amazing how something can be magnificent and maleficent at the same time. <laughs> oh, puns very much intended. <laughs> Entry number 16 in the Master Skill Division is next. From in a world devastated by the first fairy war, one hero emerged to bring justice to the people of Fairyland. This summer, from the studio that brought you the good the Bat and the Fae, Fairy Wars 2. We can't lose Gumdrop Forest. Fairy Warriors, hold your ground! Look out, grenade! Fairy Wars 2. This time, it's personal. FairyWars2TheMovie.com Yes, Fairy Wars 2 The Movie. Brought to you by IBelieveInFairies.com. That was entry number 16 in the Master Skill Division, Fairy Wars 2, the movie. As presented by Alicia Fairs, costume her own design, designed and constructed by Alicia Fairs. Entry number 17 in the Novice Skill Division, titled Cavorting in Warcraft. From the wild jungles of Stranglethorn Vale. And the tall druid trees of Teldrassil. To the misty island of Pandaria. There is at least one language we can all speak. That was entry number 17 in the Novice Skill Division, Cavorting in Warcraft, as performed by Leslie Fuller, Tristan Fuller, Scarlett Fuller, and Jamie Smith. Costume source, the online game World of Warcraft. Costumes designed and constructed by Leslie Fuller and Jamie Smith. Entry number 18 in the Novice Skill Division. Please welcome the Great Fairy. I do, I do, I do believe in fairies.com. 
That was entry number 18 uh, in the Novice Skill Division, The Great Fairy, as portrayed by Katie McKinney. The costume source was Legend of Zelda, Hyrule Warriors. And now... It is the end, but the moment has been prepared for. Last but not least, entry number 19. I need to channel a certain voice for this one. In the novice skill division, let us travel now through the cathode ray portal where animated heroes fought maniacal villains in weekly epic adventures. The heroes are lost to distant horizons, but tonight their foes meet for a deadly cabal in an act which is very warm to my heart. This is Saturday morning evil. Welcome to the fourth annual meeting of the Battle Alliance of Destruction, or BAD. Would have been better with an S. Hold on. Who invited the oversized orco? Excuse me? This is coming from a wizard who can't beat a BDSM cosplayer. Don't you have a fairy convention to ruin? Hey, hey! We're here to discuss the dis direction of those scrappy, scheming Joes! Do I need to steal you some front teeth, Mr. Lisp? Ooh, saucy. I'm totally going to post this on my space. You really are a mummy, aren't you? Twitter, where's it at? Hashtag Third Earth Problems, Mumra. Lisp! I run an international criminal organization. What do you have? An international criminal organization that actually succeeds? Hey, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, why don't you ask Snowjob for some ice to put on the burn? Up high? The only thing high is your ego, Skeletor. With my ancient spirits of blah, blah, blah. We all heard it before. So now we've already wasted half of our meeting time. Okay, I think I was better off as a solo act. Later, toy pushers. Well, that was rude. Now, as I was saying, where's my staff? Where's the amulet of power? Which of you took it? Oh, come on. Have you seen the last time I messed with amulets? Turns out snake men with the blood of Hitler wasn't the best idea. Because your track record for ideas is practically spotless otherwise. Now, seriously, who... That was entry number 19 in the Novice Skill Division, Saturday Morning Evil, brought to you by Robert, Siandi, Tia, and Chaz Stevens from the TV series He-Man, G.I. Joe, Thundercats, and... Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? <laughs> Costumes are designed and constructed by Robert Candy, Tia, and Richard Stevens. That was the final act. At this time, we're going to excuse the judges to go deliberate and do the voodoo that they do so well. Or you can stick around, it's fine. <laughs> but there's more to the halftime show. Uh, the Skittles. Yes, the Skittles. Skittles is a costuming group, and they uh, were delighted to be asked to seek out the fun costumes displayed in our halls this weekend. These friends enjoy creating color-coordinated group costumes to wear to events including NorwestCon. They love seeing the outfits you put together, and they look forward to seeing your fabulous, fabulous creations next year. Hall costumes.
I was given a note, something about a hall costume parade, but that was about it. Oh, you're coming. Okay. I can't see you. You're all up and running? Okay. So we're getting ready for the hall costume parade, and it's getting closer to our popular, soon-to-be-popular halftime event. Cascadia's got talent, so if you've got a talent you want to show it off, come on up, let our staff know, and you can be part of the gong show. So are we having fun at NorwestCon this weekend? I'll take your word for it, because I can't see you. <laughs> uh, you could be wearing anything out there. I wouldn't know. I've been picturing you all that way all night. That's how I adapt. <laughs> what does that say about mine? Mine said, I have no idea. Hi there. Oh, voice from beyond. Start the halftime. OK, start the hall costume. OK, won't you please welcome the hall costumer, no, what? Skittles, oh, the Skittles, okay, the Skittles are ready. Here's the Skittles. That was the Skittles. Now are we ready for the hall costuming? All right. Ooh, look, notes. First up, Daenerys Targaryen, mother of dragons. Hi, Vanna. Hi. This is Vanna, everybody. <laughs> Say hi to the audience we can't see. Hi, audience I can't see. Ain't this a great job? It is. It's great. Next up, making sure the Bifrost still works and having some fun at the same time, Thor pays us a visit from Asgard. Next is Eldor, the Slayer of Undead, a traveler of the mists between worlds, in a search for the creatures of chaos that corrupt and destroy peaceful lands. Our next entry, Grim Reaps accompanies Mr. George R. R. Martin wherever he goes. <laughs> she has reaped more than a few souls in his name. Okay. Our next entry, Nymphet and Monster. As Alice and the Queen of Hearts. We're Game of Thrones fans. I think we're used to that headless thing. Uh, this is a bit of a quotation here, so. Hi, I'm Heidi the Violet Luna Moth Fairy who flew in all the way from Boston and boy, are my wings tired. <laughs> Our 
Our next entry, Lady Risa is a representative of the Dark Fae Court in Victorian England that never was. Following that is Sarah Peterson as San, or Princess Mononoke, protector of the forest. And also daughter of the wolf goddess, Moro. And our next entry is Mia Gibson, graphic designer of the Time Wars franchise and owner of Missing in Action Games. She calls this look Temporal Chic, a forward fashionable look achieved by blending timeless garments with metallic accents presented in rich, dark tones. And she's followed by Ruby Rose of RWBY. Thank you to Liz B for the bag, shirt, and sash. Up next is Chell, test subject from the Aperture Science Lab. That's what happened to entry number six earlier. Up next is from The Incredibles, Elastigirl! And the next entry, dress made by Amanda Plemons and cape Women of the Cloth. Our next entry is Sedona Nicholson, an escapee of the Dalek Asylum. Next entry is Burdened with Glorious Purpose, Loki. Please welcome now, mercenary airship mechanic, Junius Price. If it's broke, he'll fix it. If it's fixed, he'll break it. He's a wrench for hire. Face paint by Althea, costume by Carlos Bain. Our next entry is Evie, portraying Poison Ivy, aspiring botanist with a bit of a dark side. Our next entry is Chris Moore, Gladiator Warrior of the Sands. I'd respond in kind, but I'd probably blow away the first three rows. Our next entry is Frederick III portraying the Rose Warrior. Our next two entries coming up is the Dread Pirate Brian and his ferocious bird, Katie the Seahawk. Our next entry is Uncle Brumach, Armored 
Death Eater. Oh, that's fine. Death. Lower in carbs than you might think. Our next entry is Kiss Me Kate, Vintage Trek Commander. Hello, nurse. Now, introducing a stone cold sweetheart. Clayheart is an original rock troll concept created and modeled by Eric. Our next entry is green, white, and floofy. Seriously, he's floofy. This is Bronwyn Thomas. And that was our la final entry for Hall Costumes. Let's give them all a hand. And now, it's time to find out who won the single pattern contest for this year. This year's pattern was Simplicity 1293, a shrug with hood or hat. The object of the competition was to create a one-of-a-kind garment from the pattern. Some adjustments or changes are allowed as long as the end product reflects the original pattern. So please welcome this year's coordinators of the single pattern contest. I'm short, so I need a little, little help here. Oh, hello. Okay, my name is Susan Trelor, and this is my co-chair, April Ferris. And in this envelope, I have some information. So if I could have the single pattern contest participants, please come up front. They're coming. I hear them. Come on up stage. Take a spot on stage. Awesome. I think we have everyone here. Fantastic. May I see Martha Eby? Martha's um, entry is called Anticipating a Wedding. She used cotton velvet, gold trim from an estate sale, and cotton lining. <laughs> Stephanie Fisher Autumn. Stephanie's costume is called Trillium Fire. It's made from wool, Belted and has wings with feathers. <laughs> Megan Lancaster. Megan's entry is the magical tail coat of Gorborn Soar. Now, she says here that the materials used was a very ugly 70s cotton. <laughs> Polyester ribbon and new novelty cotton. Next, we have Janice Mears. Now, I must say, this was a very interesting entry. 
and I did very much appreciate it. It's titled Reward of Procrastination. If you were close, you would see why. Materials used were silk, scrap fabric, and cotton embroidery floss. And now, we have some awards to give out. Tracy Plunkett. Tracy's entry is Harley Quinn. Materials used were suede, leather, and velvet. She is our judge's choice. And she's Canadian, eh? <laughs> and Ari. Provence. Ari, I'm sorry, Ari. Ari's entry is Ottoman Empire Lady Robin Hood. She used wool, fun fur, and seed beads on the back of her vet or her uh, shrug. And Ari not only got best of theme, but she also got tied with fan favorite. two awards to one person, sometimes you get confused. And not last, but the best, best in show, Erica Kramer. Her entry is called Torio, and it was made with fleece and stuff. Totoro. You know, this is my third Norwest Con, and I still haven't got it yet. She has Best of Show, and she also tied for Fan Favorite. Okay. Um, and for Best in Show, she won a full membership for next year's Norwest Con. And for... Runner-up in fan favorite, she gets a, a certificate for a pattern from the McCall Company. Aren't you glad that you did come for the, mid, for the contest here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Just this. There. Works for me. Okay. Thanks. Props are coming out. Ooh, props. I like props. So, okay. No, wait nope. So coming up next is a special announcement from one of our executives, Mr. Josh Keegan. I'm so rarely out in front of all the lights. Um, we, uh, we have somebody who's very near and dear to my heart for the last 15 years who uh, is retiring from the King County Sheriff's Office this year after 35 years and most of you know him as Officer Jim and I would like Officer Jim to come up and receive a, a round of applause from everybody who knows and loves him. He's also way in the back. <laughs> You're on mic. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Officer Jim Dreckless, King County Sheriff. Thank you. It, 
it's been fun, people. I've enjoyed you, and I always look forward to doing this with you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And now, it's that time every year during the masquerade that you've been waiting for. The guest of honor announcement for next year's NorwestCon number 39. Please welcome to the stage our convention chair, Catherine Bond, and our programming director, Lurie Parker. Again, with the being shorter than uh, the MC, and I had forgotten exactly how blinding it is up here. <laughs> uh, so as uh, Dan mentioned, I am the convention chair for NorwestCon 38, and I hope you all have been having a wonderful time at our convention. I have absolutely no idea how many of you are out there clapping. Um, so I'm not going to spend too much time telling you about the wonderful things you have already experienced, but I do want to encourage all of you to not only stick around to uh, hear the announced winners at the end of the masquerade, but also if you have specific comments uh, about the convention or, or your experience here, please do come tomorrow to our Onions and Roses panel. Um, you can find out where and when in the guidebook, which I will be using to find out where and when. And uh, I hope to see you there. And without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Lurie, our programming director, who will share the wonderful announcement about who is coming to NorwestCon 39, March 24th through 27th, 2016. You guys having a good time? Woo! Do you have any pants? Yes. Do you like them? Yes. I take all the credit. <laughs> I joke, my, my staff has been amazing this year. So, with no further ado, as Director of Programming, I have the distinct privilege of chairing the Guest of Honor Selection Committee, along with the Convention Chair, the Vice Chair, and the two elected members of the selection committee, it's our job to assemble the team of headliners for the next convention. Norwestcon 39's writer guest of honor has been a professional writer since the age of 10. She sold two poems to the local paper for the princely sum of $10. And has, and has had several side careers as a cook in the military, a game store clerk, and working at the oldest surviving sci-fi bookstore in North America. Somewhere in there, she also received a degree in radio and television arts, all while writing seven novels and nine short stories. She's written multiple series in science fiction and contemporary fantasies, one of which has been made into a TV series, and is a familiar face in felt concerts from coast to coast. She also has multiple nominations for Tip Tree, Locus, and Spectrum Awards, and has won two Aurora, Aurora Awards. In more recent years, she's relocated the, to the wilds of rural Ontario, where she and her wife, also a science fiction author, live with their six cats and an accidental chihuahua. <laughs> the Northwest 139 Writer Guest of Honor is Tanya Huff. <laughs> Our next artist guest of honor is a three-time Chesley winning illustrator, as well as novelist. She's written several series, both solo and co-authored, has produced illustrations for role-playing games, and her artwork has been showcased at the commemorative exhibition for the 25th anniversary of NASA at the Hayden Planetarium. She's also a familiar face at NorwestCon, as she was here a few years back at NorwestCon 16. The NorwestCon 39 Artist Guest of Honor is Jenny Wirtz. <laughs> Next year's Science Guest of Honor is also another polymath, a painter, a writer, and a scientific researcher. Excuse me, my horns are coming off. Woo! It's always a problem. Uh, his research has primarily been in the evolution of the planetary system and planetary surfaces. 
And through the use of crater counts, he was able to successfully predict the age of the lunar lava plains four years before Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. In addition to his paintings of terrestrial landscapes and astronomic art, he's written three textbooks, eight illustrated nonfiction books, and two nonfiction novels. The NorwestCon 39 Science Guest of Honor is Dr. William K. Hartman. The publisher we select is the editor of one or more of our other guests of honor, and this year is no exception. Our Spotlight publisher representatives are also familiar faces from Westcon as well, appearing here at, previously at Westcon's 29 and 33. Tailing from the first publishing company ever devoted exclusively to science fiction and fantasy, since their first release in 1972, they have published the works of such luminaries as Marion Zimmer Bradley, Fritz Lieber, Edward Llewellyn, Jerry Purnell, Roger Zelazny, CJ Cherry, and Tanya Uff. Northwest 139 Spotlight publisher will be Daw Books, represented once again by Betsy Wolham and Sheila Gilbert. <laughs> Another of my duties on the committee is to come up with a theme for the next convention. In some years, the theme informs the guests we invite, and in other years, the guests we select, the guests we select, give us the idea for the theme. This year, I was inspired by nostalgia, both by our multiple returning guests and by the view of the future suggested by Seattle's own aspirational landmark, the Space Needle. The golden age of science fiction, with shiny silver spaceships, steamy Venusian jungles, a Mars covered in armies of little green men, and flying cars. I still want my flying car. <laughs> The theme for No Rest on 39 is Remembering the Future. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for No Rest on 38. And be sure to pre-register in the lobby tomorrow for No Rest on 39, where for the first time you'll be able to purchase tickets for the Guest of Honor Banquet in advance. And remember, once you lose, leave the building, the prices go up. Thank you. Hi, judges. Welcome back. Let's welcome back the judges. They are back from deliberating, so to present the awards for tonight, please welcome our masquerade director, Peggy Stewart. All right. We're going to start with the workmanship first. And the judges are giving honorable mention to number five, Off to See the Wizard. And this is for Off workmanship. The Wizard, the Wonderful Wizard of Oz. We hear he is the Wizard of Wiz, if ever a Wiz there was. If ever a ever a Wiz there was, the Wizard of Oz is one because, 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 because of the wonderful things he does. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of all. Right, the next workmanship award is the best workmanship in the novice class. That's number three, Future Cops. Dalek up the ramp. All right, best in workmanship in the journeyman class. It goes to Stranger in a Strange Land. Number 11. <laughs> At the next workmanship class, 
is best in the master class, and that goes to Fairy Wars 2, the movie. We can't lose Gumdrop Forest. Fairy Warriors, hold your ground! Look out! Grenade! Fairy Wars 2. This time, it's personal. FairyWars2TheMovie.com All right, the next one is the best in show for the workmanship. And they are truly fabulous. Cavorting in oh, Warcraft. to our Workmanship Awards. They are all fabulous. All right, we've got some judges' choices to give out, and the first judges' choice award goes to the captain for best presentation nostalgia. The next judge's choice goes to best video game characterization, the great fairy. All right, the next judge's choice is for best use of evil, honey, I'm home. I like you, Peggy. <laughs> All right, and there's a we have a director's choice award, which is my pick, and I've been a little busy, so I didn't actually fill out a certificate. I will do that later. I'm bad like that, and mine goes to the avatars. Sorry. Yay. I owe you a certificate, and I will not forget. All right, and now we're back. Best theme of Aces or Jokers. This is Saturday Morning Evil, number 19. to the best in the classes and we're going to start with best in novice class and that's prevent that's presented to future cops And the Daleks coming back, yay! This award comes with three NerwestCon memberships. One for each of them for next year. Best in Journeyman, and that is number seven. Question Hello, again. Stonehenge. Next question. Who's coming to take it from? I don't have anything to lose. So, if you're sitting up there with your silly little spaceship... And again,
again, another membership to Northwest Pound 39. All right, now we have the best in the master class, and that is being presented to Consider It Shaken. <laughs> Another membership. by Princess Leia. <laughs> My husband's going to be so jealous. It's fabulous. All right, now we're to the final award, the big daddy, the big one, the best in show. And the person who won it is truly deserving. It is Davy Crockett in Outer Space. <laughs> Just a little round And shot off his gun With a bacon and a sound Davey, Davey Crockett King of his friends We have a theme running here You know, no certificates That we should have He also wins a full membership To um, Sasquan The World Con And we have one more award. It is. It's not up here. Oh, there it is. Okay. Ah, there was a sheet for this, wasn't there? Ah, yes. All right. Sorry, I skipped over one. This is the Trixie Award. Every year at NorwestCon, the Beyond Reality Costumers Guild celebrates the memory of Trixie Christensen, a guild member who is known for her loud, over the top costumes and her loud, over the top personality. In addition to this beautiful ribbon, the award comes with a membership to Beyond, Co Beyond Con in scenic Gig Harbor, February 19th through the 21st in 2016, and that is the costuming convention. And the Trixie Award goes to Saturday Morning Evil. That is lovely. All right. Thank you all for hanging in. That's the end of the awards. Um, we would like to thank everyone for, for coming and staying, and we want to thank our fabulous panel of judges, all of you, workmanship and presentation. I want to thank sound, both James and Keith. We want to thank lighting, Shay and her fabulous spots, Alan and video, Trent, all the ninjas, Alan, my boss. Karen, the lovely judge's secretary. Do we have a lost and found? What lost and found? Can't forget our MC, Dan. Dan the man. We couldn't do this without Dan being funny.